my name is Ron Sokoli and I'm a former Olympic Great Britain boxer and now a professional boxer. I was 17 when I started boxing and I feel age can be a factor in boxing for two different reasons. One is if you start too young, a lot of people burn themselves out, so they're really good when they're, you know, 12 to 16, 17, but then by that time they've had dozens of fights, they lose a bit of interest in boxing once they find out they can go out, get girls, get guys, whatever. But then also when you start later, you miss out on a lot of experience that some of the younger ones got. So it's interesting, it balances itself out sometimes, but um, yeah, it depends on the individual. A usual day in my field as a boxer looks like I do two to three sessions a day. If you count a run as a session, so I wake up early in the morning, go for a run, get it done out of the way. And the runs are, it depends on how close I'm to a fight. They're either long runs, to get an overall level of fitness, or there'll be sprints as we get closer to build up the sharpness, come home, either sleep or rest, and then go either to SNC, which I'm a believer in, which is strength circuits, you know, fitness, what bikes, whatever. Finish that, get a nap in the middle of the day, get some food, rest a little bit, and then come to the bread and butter, which is the boxing gym, where you get in the sparring, the bag work, the pad work, and work on the tactics, because all the other stuff is just building blocks. So the runs, it's just so you can stay in the ring for longer. The strength and conditioning, so you can punch harder, be a bit more explosive so it's all building for the main session i think it's important to train almost every day but not every day because rest is really important because you build up a level of fatigue throughout the week which if you don't allow your body to rest it's just going to keep running itself down and then you don't reap the rewards of the hard work you put in there's over resting and there's over training so you have to find the balance that's where experience comes in i don't know if i, if I count boxing as being an entrepreneur it's, di it's difficult i mean i am my own brand now and i'm my own business so i guess in a way it is because with boxing the amount of work you put in is what you get out so same with being an entrepreneur if you put in a lot of hours in whatever field you're in you and it's clever hours and you're actually good at what you do you'll reap rewards so it's the same with boxing i think it's taught me that everything's sort of on my arm um, back and on my shoulders so i can have the best coach in the world the best communication in the world the best running track whatever but unless i put the work in myself and you know when no one's looking when my coach goes home today he doesn't know what i'm gonna get up to when i'm waking up I, I don't actually have to go for a run. No one's there with a gun to my head. In SNC, could I push a bit harder? Yeah, you, you know within yourself. So that's where it, it, it comes in. So I think that, you know what I mean? There's a lot more depth to me than even I realised because when I was, you know, working at McDonald's, working in the London Eye, I sort of was, you know, under people the whole time and had like minor ambitions of, you know, maybe I'll be the manager of this McDonald's one day and so on and so forth. But once I was exposed to Everything's on me. So, for example, going qualifying for the Olympics, boxing. Every time I box, there's cameras, there's lights, there's actions, and it taught me that I can handle it. Because you don't really know until you're in there when all the cameras are on you before you fight. So you had to deal with the stress of, you know, interviews, so on and so forth, and all your friends and family messaging you, "Good luck, I'm praying, I'll be watching." As much as it's all support and it's love, and I embrace it, it comes with a lot of pressure because you know all those people are going to be watching you, and you know, in a sport like boxing, as much as all other sports are competitive. The sport like boxing, you put your pride on the line as well because it's a fight with another human being. So at the end of it, where some sports or some different businesses, at the end you've taken a loss. In boxing, you get knocked out, you have to deal with, you know, the shame and so on and so forth. So it taught me that I've really, I've got a lot a, of self-belief and a lot of depth in the fact that I can put my pride on the line and, and go for it. And then God forbid, take if I take a loss as a professional, I've taken losses as amateurs and managed to bounce back. So it shows me I'm a lot more resilient than I knew. If I was going to put a song to my boxing work effort, I think it would be Oh Cold Is At The Cage. It's a song that one of my friends made for me like, as a surprise. And it, you know, it talks about a lot of the, you know, the, the side of boxing, that shows a lot. But if it was more a mainstream song, I think it's Kevin Gates, I Don't Get Tired, stuff like that, that, that song. Because it's just about just working, working, working. I was trying to get it out of here. I want them dead presidents. I want to pull up. Head spin, get it, get flat. I got six jobs, I don't get it. much as you can get physically tired, you've got to keep pushing through it. So I think that song, definitely. Work ethic is extremely important to me in particular in boxing, because I see a lot of people in boxing working hard. It's, it's a sport where you have to work hard, 
or you're going to get yourself seriously hurt. So when works hard, but I think that for me, I work extremely hard, but also work extremely smart. So like I said, taking the right amount of rest, push my body as hard as I can without it having the negative effects and choosing what sessions to do when. So I think the strength and condition I do, it's productive to being a boxer. So a lot of people think, you know, if you do weights, it's gonna make you slow and heavy. But if you do it smart, it benefits you. When you come to the boxing gym, someone else might spar 10 rounds, I might spar 10 rounds, but what I'm doing in them 10 rounds is, is smarter than what someone else is doing in 10 rounds. So I think that work up is important, but also working smart is even more important. So it's not about how much work you put in, it's about how clever the work you put in is. I think my childhood, I was different characters. I think, um, obviously I started off, I was really chubby, shy, reserved, had to deal with some bullying stuff. But I think once I started to grow into myself, especially with the boxing, like I felt like it, it brought out another side of me where I was a bit more sociable, a bit more funny, so on and so forth. So I think you should keep the inner child in you because obviously children are adventurous, they're ready to go for it. They obviously, ignorance is bliss. And as, when you're a child, you're quite ignorant. So it's, 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 it's an interesting one, definitely. Definitely it's good to keep the inner child alive. If someone wants to be a boxer and they're my weight, don't. But if you're another weight class, I feel like the stuff that's important is self-belief, most importantly. Because when you're by yourself in them quiet moments and you know you've got to fight this guy or that guy, believing in yourself is what's going to push you out of you, push out more, believe in your goals. So when you go for a run today, you can think that you're better than the person you're going to fight and that can make you get lazy. But you have to set goals past any one opponent, any one thing, any one tournament. Are bigger so that when you're running, you're putting it in the bank for that world title or, or that whatever. So. Um, I think that's extremely important. So every day you have to set a big goal that makes all the, the little tedious um, training sessions for something. So you're putting it in the bank so that you can eventually go and you know pay for that world championship, pay for that title, pay for whatever. That's, that's how I like to look at it. When it comes to boxing, to get to that next level, obviously if you're talented, your talent will shine through. It's obviously, it's, you know, getting opportunities, but I think if you're winning constantly and taking risks and winning, you'll get noticed. And once you get noticed, that's when people want to see you fight. So a lot of boxers get paid by the amount of people that want to see them fight. So if you bring something to the table, it's not all about winning. It is all about winning when you're at this level, but it's not all about winning, it's about creating excitement in and outside of the ring. Once you can do that, people will be drawn to you. Like if you give them what they want to see, because people have to pay their hard-earned money to watch you fight. So if you give them what they want to see, which is excitement, putting everything on the line, going for it, you'll get noticed and you'll get to that next level. But it also comes down to actually being good. Not saying that the guys who aren't seen, because there's a lot of good fighters that I know who haven't got that next level up in terms of promotion. But once you keep working, keep grafting, and you know, you have a strategy, not just working hard, like I said, working smart with social media, with you know who you fight, when you fight, you'll definitely get that next level. So one hidden truth is that a lot of people see fights on the TV, whatever. So for example, my last fight was 30 seconds and it was you know over, maybe 20 seconds, whatever. But people don't see that before you even get, let's even talk about fight week. You train for weeks, building up to an event, you sparred, you know, maybe 10, 20 times the amount of rounds you're gonna fight. Some stuff that people don't see that goes on in boxing is, for example, you know, all of the training that you do, training three times a day for six days a week, for eight weeks leading up to a fight. Do you know what I mean? Just as a, just as a standard. And you know, you spot dozens and dozens and dozens of rounds. There's that mental effect, you know what I mean? When you have to train, when you don't want to train, it's draining you physically, it's draining you mentally, it's draining you every way. And like not being able to go out, I'm still at an age where my friends go out, you know what I mean? There's a, you know, people drink, do whatever, and I have to say no. So even if I go out, I won't be able to drink, won't be able to get fully involved. And it's a little bit annoying because I, I, you know what I mean? I enjoy going out and, you know, I'm having fun, but you have to say no to all of that. Then you get to the stage where you're sparring and a lot of stuff happens in sparring that people don't see. So you hurt people, you get hurt yourself. So, so it's taxing, it's not only when you get hurt, it's when you hurt someone else. It's like you feel a little, oh. Say you see someone there unconscious, you feel a little bit, oh, God, that guy hasn't done anything to me and just knocked him out, do you know what I mean? Obviously you get over it, but all that stuff. Then you get to fight week. So that's when it's, that's when it's really intense because you've got all the media obligations, you've got the pressure on, you've got to fight and perform on this particular day. It's like being in school, you know in school when, you know, a kid says after school, 3.30, they catch you outside. The whole day you're thinking about it. Friday night, I'm fighting, or Saturday night, I'm fighting this guy and at this time. So you have to go through the week knowing that, then you get the messages from everyone. Oh, I wish you the best of luck, this, that, and other. And you, you know that, you know, as much as you want to do well, you're not in complete control of it because there's another person across the ring from you who's got his own family sending them messages and, you know, he's got his own pressures that he has to do it. 
then it gets closer day by day. So the training reduces. Then you get to the fight venue. It's the day, you know, you're feeding it. You have to deal with, you know, the, the backstage stuff, staying calm, knowing the, the crowd's getting louder and louder as the, as the fight, as the day goes on. You know, your hands are wrapped, you have to stay composed, get over injuries, and then go out and know, as much as you've done so much training throughout the, you know, the weeks, this is the only time that it matters. You've thrown thousands of punches in the build-up to it, but the only punches that matter are the ones that you're about to do now. So you have to deal with that pressure as well, and then, go out there and perform. So if it's over in 30 seconds or it goes a full fight, you just have to, you know what I mean, um, keep your composed and do all that. I think that having a team is extremely important. Once again, it's a sport where once all the team's gone, it's you and another person and a referee in the ring having a, having a fight. Doesn't, you can never escape that in a sport like boxing. But having a good team helps you get prepared for it. So having a good coach, having a, like a good group of friends that don't drag you out, because it's hard. As, a, like, as much as you can be strong mentally, if you've got people around you that are always, you know, joking, like smoking or drinking around you or, you know, bringing girls and so on and so forth, like it can eventually either rub, like affect you in the sense that you delve into it or affect you in a way where it's just stressing you, oh, just move away from me, move away from me. So once you have a good group of friends who are supportive, it's like, if you even want to go out and drink one time, they're like, whoa, mate, you've got training and correct you and then, you know, remind you, you know, of your goals, it's important. But most importantly, it's self-control. Because like I said, once your coach goes home, you know, I mean, your friends go to bed and it's you and your phone, you know, do I go see that girl? Do I go drinking? Do I have this extra sweet late night? Do I, do you know what I mean? It's up to you. So I think self-motivation, like in anything, it's, it's, it's the most important thing is to, be stronger than yourself, but having a good support system around you is, 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 is it helps it along. My moment of wonder, I think, is a series of moments. So the first day I walked in the gym, I was like 118 kilos, really overweight for my age. And that's the reason why I started boxing in the first place is as a way of losing weight. I remember the first day I got into the gym, seeing everyone, you know, punching each other or whatever. And I started and it was, you know, um, get down, do 10 push-ups, this, that, and that. And you're forced into that situation where I when I went to gym myself, I'd do five and be happy with it. But hey, you're forced to do 10. And I realised from the first time I went to the boxing gym, they asked me to spar. I got in and I was sparring someone who, you know, obviously had been a boxer already. And I left the ring thinking, like, yeah, wow, I, I really did my, did my job there. You know, missing punches. Obviously, I, I would love to see the video, I never will. But I felt like, yeah, I did all right. Then I was there the next day and the next, and then, and then, and then just carried on from there. And I think a big part also for my confidence was um, sparring Anthony Joshua and another boxer called Dylan White. Those two were like people that I've been watching on TV, so on and so forth. I knew Joshua won the Olympics, won the ABAs, won a world silver medal. So like, I was in awe of that, all of them. And I went and sparred them and like, I, I did all right with both of them. You know what I mean? I was, like, it wasn't like I left the gym black eyed, battered and bruised. And I thought, you know, these guys are, on TV and if I keep working like this, maybe, you know, I can get to that kind of level, you know, getting called up for the GB team and then sparring against the top boxers in Great Britain. And then that was another one where I was just like, I, I didn't know what to expect. I'd only had 15 fights, which put me in a novice category. And I'm sparring against people who've had 50, 60 or more fights who, you know, won ABAs, won European champion. You know what I mean? One big stuff that I knew and I knew who they were. They didn't know who I was. I was just, that guy who's, oh, how did you, how did he get here, kind of thing. And then sparring them, doing well, and feeling like I'm getting the better of them. Really, that's when I started ticking, okay, cool, like, I'm definitely the best in Great Britain. Let's see how far we can, you know, take it. Then obviously going to the Europeans, which was my first major tournament, where after only like five months of being in the Great Britain team and having 19 fights, that's still, I'm still in the novice category. As I go to the Europeans, fighting against people who've had hundreds, who are ranked, who I've, searched up their names, oh no, that's blah, blah, blah. He's number three, he's number eight. And then seeing my route, and my route was, like on paper, it was ridiculous, because I had like first fight in Moldova, got the knockout. Then I boxed against a guy from Netherlands who was ranked number eight in the world. I remembered him, because he was at a tournament that I'd went to the month before, and I unfortunately lost a split decision out there to the home fighter. So I was in Germany and I lost to Germany, not making any excuses, but, you know, and me and the guy had a moment. So the, this guy won that tournament easy. Like I watched him, I was like, wow, that guy's actually really good. We had a moment where he knew I'd lost, I, like, cause the tournament's over. The, the elevator doors were open and I was standing a bit away from the elevators. And he said, yo, I'm Great Britain. So I turned and I looked over him. And then um, he's like, oh, you lost in it. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh, to Germany. And I was like, yeah. And then he kind of looked at me in a way where like, yeah. You did, didn't you? And I won. 
and then the door shut. And then as it left, he took a piece of me with him that day. And then the next month, we're boxing in the qualifier. So at this stage, whoever wins this goes on to the fight before the qualifier. So if I lost, I'm not going to the Olympics. If I beat him, he's not going to the Olympics. And then he was ranked number eight and, I, and he had a tricky style, but I that beat him easy, you know, cut his eye, bust him up, just that, no. So then after that, I was like, oh, like, I'm, I am doing this, there's no doubt. So that was a, that was a good moment for me. As much as it sh you shouldn't be petty, I still felt something with that win. Then I boxed Turkey in Turkey. So it was a similar situation with boxing in Germany. So I knew I had to beat this guy convincingly because you know, they want their home fighter to go to the Olympics. So I remember pushing it, you know, I was getting messages from my coach, Brian, here on what kind of thing to do. But that's the ones where you have to push yourself because there's beating someone, you can, you know, pop a couple of jabs out, you can, you know, box within your comfort zone. But with that fight, I had to completely go for it, empty it all out, managed to win that one. Finally, I boxed against. For the quarter, for this spot now, you win this fight, you're going to the Olympics. That's probably the most pressure I felt. And this is all within a week as well, all of these fights. Just, Box one day, rest, box one day. The last one I'm boxing against, number three ranked boxer in the world. It was like fight number 23 for me, something like that, and I was there. I remember with the GB team, everyone's nervous because, you know, it's that day where anyone who wins today is going to Olympics and a bunch of us were through to it. I remember and I was just there, like, I was so gassed off the other days. I was just like, there's no way I'm going to lose. Like, I'm going to be this guy. Don't get too cocky, you know, he's, you know, number three in the world, it's okay. Like, I was actually sent to that tournament just as an experience. So it's just like, go there, see how it goes. And I was there running through it. I remember just saying, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bar him, he's not gonna touch him, this, that, and other. And that's when the real, like, obviously the real self-confidence I have came out. And a lot of people might call it arrogant or whatever, but it's how I feel about boxing. It's like, you know what I mean? This is, this is my sport, I put in all this work. Why can't I be confident before I fight? I went out there and this one was on BBC, so I knew everyone's going to be tuning in. It's the Olympics, do you know what I mean? So not just friends and family, but all the other boxers, you know, watching to see, you know, the same way I watched the Commonwealth and the Olympics. Okay, cool. Let's see if I okay, can do it or whatever. Went out there and then um, won that fight and won it um, convincingly. So after that, I was just like, you know, whatever happens from here, I'm going to the Olympics. Do you know what I mean? Like with the limited experience I've got, I've managed to do all this. So I imagine myself in a year, two years, three years. So as much as Olympics is a lot of people's pinnacle, I've, I've had goals from before the Olympics of what I want to do as a professional and winning my first fight in 20 seconds, a lot of people get excited. For me, it's just a win and a step on the journey that I'm going on. So it's all just, yeah, it's all just part of it. So I'm just, I'm, I'm on it. Since following my dreams, it's taught me that having fear is the opposite of what you need. It's, it's literally the worst thing you can have in a sport, once again, like boxing. Yeah, basically, the moment you start feeling scared of an opportunity or a person or an occasion, it's the beginning of the end because, you know, when you have the fear and it turns into nerves and it turns into negative nerves, it works two ways. So the negative energy and negative nerves actually makes you a lot more tired a lot more quickly. And then you're not concentrating on actually what you need to do, which is breathe, relax, punch, watch out what they're punching back and it become, you become overall to the occasion. So that's one thing. And also when you become afraid of an opponent in particular, it makes everything they do 10 times worse. Like when they twitch, you overreact. When they hit you, 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 you see it as, harder than it is. So having fear is just, it's, it's, it's not what you need. And also it stops you from, like I said, reaching the next heights. What a lot of boxers are, a lot of boxers are good. I can see a boxer and I say, oh, this guy's good. But what they're scared of is that to project it. Does that make sense? So there's being humble and not saying too much and, you know, just getting on with your job. But there's also in a sport like boxing now, it's a lot of it is commercial. Do you know what I mean? When you're amateur, it's get in there, fight, win stuff. But when you turn professional, it's commercial. It's like, JD Sports, it's, you know, how many people want to come watch, who wants to watch you fight on TV? It's a whole package, you get what I'm coming from. And a lot of boxers are scared of talking out because if you talk out too much and then you lose, you know, you become a meme, you become this, that, and other. So once you become, you know, scared and wrapped up in all those fears of the unknown and what could happen and what, oh, if I say this and this happens, it really, it, it, it's, it's just counterproductive. So I think a lot of progress comes from not being scared because it enables you um, to do great things. So for me, talking about not being afraid when I'm boxing against top quality opposition with limited amount of fights. I mean, a big deal was made out of me going to the Olympics because I had such little fights. If I was scared going into the qualifiers or going into any of those fights I've had when I got into the Great Britain team, I wouldn't have been able to get to the Olympics because, you know, on paper, for example, 10 times less than some of the people that I boxed. So I'd had 23 and someone I boxed had had 230 fights on, on record that I could literally flip 
through pages and okay, that's but like I had, you know, two pages of fights. If I go in scared, do you know what I mean? I won't be able to perform. So in my life, having fear in boxing is not good. And I think if I could say anything to anyone else is no matter who you're boxing, who you're fighting, just you can have respect for them because you have to respect another fighter. But letting it become fear is just counterproductive. Special quotes to me are chin down, hands up, because it's basically boxing's not that difficult. That's what I take from it. It's literally what's gonna happen is gonna happen. That's another quote, sorry. Okay, so Rasa it's one that I kept saying, you know, before the Olympics, during the Olympics, whatever, and as I go out now, is that what will be will be. So I put in all the hard work I can. There's nothing else I can do except for go out and fight. The other person put in all the work, all they can do is come out and fight. So what will be will be. If I'm meant to win and I do everything I can, I'll win. If the other person is meant to win, they're gonna win. That's the bottom line, so what will be will be. And another thing is there is no opponent. That one really sticks with me because um, no matter who you're fighting or what you're doing or whatever, it needs to be all about yourself because once you get caught up in someone's name or their accolades or what they've done or where they're ranked or how many fights they've had, you get caught up in the circus and the occasion of it all. And I've come unstuck in that exact same scenario where another, and it, it really affects you. But once you get into that mindset of it's just a, like an energy in front of you when you're fighting, it's literally what, who it is, it's nothing. It's just a blank canvas of energy and all that energy is doing is testing you so when it, someone throws punches at you it's a test of yourself okay how good are my reactions do you know what I mean I've been working in the gym at someone throws a jab I do this someone throws a right hand I do that and once that's getting presented to you by the energy not you know um, Mike Jeffries or you know Harry Kane or whatever it's just the energy you've been working in the gym and it's time for you to execute it under the pressure of the light so I think that one's more that one's really important to me as well yeah, I maintain my focus on not getting over, like not allowing what other people have got or are doing to affect my life. So for example, I'm close to people in boxing who are doing extremely well and I can see Floyd Mayover, so on and so forth that are, you know what I mean, making many millions. And the main thing that I focus on is, A, I can't spend the money that they're making and B, if I continue to do the work I'm doing, all that they've done is set out a sort of blueprint. As much as you can be a trailblazer and do things your own way, there's a blueprint. You fight, you get more people to watch you fight, you get paid more. But all of it, whatever it comes down to is all those people that you see that are at that level, it's not by mistake or by fluke. You look at them fighting and you respect it and you want to watch it. So what I focus on is every day in the gym, perfecting my craft so that I can be the best fighter I can and all the other stuff comes with it. So when I started boxing, as much as I had goals and aspirations, it wasn't, oh, I'm going to get this car or you know that is I want to be champion and then with that mentality I've managed to get myself to this position and I'm nowhere compared to where I want to get to and where I believe I'm going to get to so when people look at me oh my god no she made it you're on the cover of JD I'm just looking and I'm just thinking this is nothing compared to what I've set my sights on I mean there's going to be campaigns there's going to be you know bigger and better things stuff that I probably can't even fathom now it's going to happen I'll probably go on holiday somewhere in another country and see myself and oh this is me in you know Dubai or this is me in Florida or whatever so the main thing is I know I believe in myself I believe in the branding that's getting put into me but all of it stops as soon as I stop putting them working when it comes to fighting does that make sense so the main thing is focusing on my craft and all the other stuff that get built around my name is Ronzo Coley and you've just seen the wonders that got me here today